Well, it seems like this, um, to some degree, suggests that the European Commission is engaging more with the problems in Macedonia. I mean, the crisis from December, um, of course, the threat of the boycott. So I think in that sense, it's, of course, the consequences can be that there will be a negative report. So that's, of course, the most obvious consequence in, in April from the Commission and then from the Council later on in June. Um, so that's negative. Um, but at the same time, the positive thing seems to be that the European Commission is engaging in the problem so that it's taking it seriously. I mean, Stefano Sanino was there, Fule was there. We've had statements from the European Parliament. So in that sense, um, the signals are critical, but that the, fa the fact that the European Union is engaging with them rather than just ignoring Macedonia, uh, I think is quite a positive signal in the sense that they are taking the problem seriously and trying to, I guess, contribute to a solution. Well, listen, I mean, the European Commission and the European actors have a limited leverage to solve a domestic political problem. I mean, look at Albania. Albania has had similar problems like Macedonia is having over the last months for years. A very polarized political system with the opposition and the government always very much at confrontation. Uh, and the European Commission has been, and the European Union has been sometimes able to solve it a little bit, to improve it a little bit, but fundamentally, even... You know, we know even the U.S. Embassy has tried to intervene, and all of them can't solve a domestic political problem. They can push it along and try to offer solutions, but they can't solve it. So from that point of view, I wouldn't expect too much from the European Commission and the European Union, but they can certainly provide some incentives to push it along. But the problem is, of course, does the government um, really want EU integration? Uh, and that's something I'm not sure about. So the European Union's leverage is based on the idea that everybody wants to join the European Union more than anything else. But whether that's true or not is something which, well, at least we can always uh, doubt at some points. Well, I think over the last years, I'm not sure that the government has always been willing to resolve the name dispute. I mean, we all know that the main obstacle to get closer to the European Union at the moment has been the name dispute with Greece. And I think the whole policies, the kind of very provocative monument building, street naming, airport naming policies of the government in the last five years does not display very good will on behalf of Macedonia. And I think uh, Macedonia lost a lot of friends in the European Union because of that policy. Before, many thought Greece was the one who was behaving irrationally, who was um, unreasonable in its position. But I think now if you talk to diplomats, many would find um, that this position has changed and that, of course, Greece is seen as being the main source of the problem. But Macedonia and the government is not seen as being helping um, a solution. So on that point of view, I would say, the government seems to have chosen over the recent years nation building and national identity promotion domestically at the expense of getting closer to the European Union. Well, I think it's certainly a possibility um, that it might lose the recommendation. I mean, I think that the support uh, for bringing Macedonia further is limited at the moment, especially in the capitals. You have to realize that probably the biggest ally in favor of EU enlargement at the moment is the Commission. Many EU member states are very skeptical, very critical of further enlargement. So the Commission has to work twice as hard to convince member states that it's worthwhile going forward. So whether or not it's going to withdraw the recommendation or not is something it's very hard to predict from the outside. But certainly it seems like a real possibility if the polarization continues and if we see a worsening uh, in the context of the local elections. Now, it strikes me that the, the, the threat does not only apply to the government, but also to some degree to the overall polarization. So I wouldn't compare it to Mechia, although I think there are some parallels, but I think it's overall a reflection of the polarized and uncompromising political climate, which honestly does not only uh, deserve to be blamed on the government, but also on the opposition. Well, I, I would be very worried about that, of course, because the question then is how much does Macedonia pursue EU integration? I think there's a lot of skepticism um, already now in Macedonia over whether it anyhow get towards negotiations. And so I think that point, I think, I think it might be discouraging for further EU integration. And that's, nobody wants this. 
Um, I think the rest of the, the European Union, there, especially the Commission, want to keep the process of European integration alive. And Macedonia, together with, uh, with Montenegro, are the closest um, in, in this process. So if, one would, if Macedonia would be pushed out one further step, this certainly would worsen not just the chances for Macedonia, but for the whole region. So I think there's a lot of interest, both from the Commission as well as from other uh, EU institutions, to not let that happen. But if it were to happen, certainly it would raise serious questions uh, whether Macedonia uh, can, uh, you know, wh what it has to do and whether the government would feel it should abandon EU integration publicly. Or So I think there are lots of possibilities. Uh, none of them sound very good could be a healthy shock to the system. Maybe citizens might realize that um, the political elite has not served them well towards EU integration, but it seems to come at a very high price if that were to happen. Well, I think, you know, the European Commission has to have a credible threat. I mean, you know, any, any enlargement process is based on the fact that countries transform, make changes, become, you know, more democratic, more respectful of the rule of law, more reformed. Now, of course, that can only work if actually the countries are doing it, and there has to be an alternative. And I think the Commission has that alternative to withdraw that recommendation. Now, mind you, this is mostly a symbolic step, because the Commission can, end, can reissue it six months down the road, and we know that until there is some further progress in the name issue, anyhow, there won't be beginning to accession talks. So I think that threat is a symbolic one. It wouldn't have major consequences directly for Macedonia, but it certainly would be a very strong signal. And I think um, one has to realize that, in that sense, the Commission has all the cards uh, and should also be ready to use them if necessary if there is absolutely no progress going on.